all right what's up everyone it's uh yeah it's not it's just it's nasty outside man it's just not it's not fun but i'm gonna shoot this video i got this uh we just had that uh florida event down there at toho and i was shot a bunch of videos i'm putting them out there my next one's going to come out tomorrow which would be a monday uh it's gonna be my third one and so it had a combination of like everything that went on down there at Toho. It's really cool, man. It's just a really interesting, interesting video, man. And to see how all three of those videos encapsulated the entire event. And then like you got to see fish that weren't on beds, like start to push like during the event or like overnight. And it like really changed everything. So I was throwing a cutter worm and I had a whole bunch of people ask, about the cutter worm, speed worm, whatever you want to call it. Um, and like how to rig it and why I was doing certain things. And there's some tricks that maybe I didn't even share with y'all. Um, that like, I don't even know if I realized what I was doing with it sometimes. Uh, so I'm gonna rig one up. I'm gonna show y'all how to do it. Um, I'm gonna show you the rod, the reel, the line, the hook, the bait, everything I was doing, and then kind of explain why I did the, some of the things I did. So, uh, let me get this uh let me get this boat cover out as you see it was raining last night and i'm about to head over to to grow savant to do a strike king riders conference so i got to get it off anyways but let me get this off and uh we'll dig right into it man all right we're back got everything un uncovered uh my boat's a wreck by the way man like <laughs> i caught this giant grinnell in the tournament and he he got all over here man and, and like there's white stuff all over this place right here anyways i'm gonna have to clean that up man i hadn't i hadn't really got it's been a day or two a couple days i hadn't fished yet I had a cover on I hadn't looked at my boat that's nasty all right so here's the deal the cutter worm uh speed worm however you want to call it this is basically what it is right it's just a texas rig it, it seems pretty simple but there's some key things you want to pay attention to this is this is where i had it on and, and I'm going I'm to keep that right there, all right? I'm going to tie it, a new one on there for y'all to kind of see. So this is basically what it is, rig up a speed worm. What I did was, is you always want to st start with a stopper, you know? So I'll, I'll get a stopper, put it on there. And what that is, is bobber stoppers, right? Uh, th that's the best keepers now there are. Uh, you know, we used to use toothpicks and stuff back in the day, all kinds of stuff. This is easy. Just run it through that, run your line through that, that hole and just slide it up on there, right? For some of y'all, this might be simple. I get it. But for others, you know, y'all never done that. So that's what it is. Choosing weights. I, man, I'm the world's worst with knowing exactly what weight that is. I really just like to pick stuff that looks good. Um, so that kind of feels right to me. So this is usually like a five eighths or a quarter or something somewhere around that size is what you want to uh, use. Kind of depends on how thick the cover is you're throwing it in or how deep you want to go or how fast you want to reel. So I just, I just put that on there. Now, this is the most important part. So I'm going to tell you all kind of like a little story about what, how I figured this out or why I choose a certain hook rather than just tell you all to use it. When I went down to Florida for the first time, uh, we were throwing that speed worm. And on on day two of Kissimmee, it was the Kissimmee chain, not the Kissimmee chain, the Harris chain, right? I, I rigged one up and I hadn't really thrown it that much. We'd thrown it around and caught some fish on it back home, you know, around Texas and stuff, but I didn't really think much about it, you know? I mean, it's just th put a hook on there and, and rig it. So I was, I was throwing an owner jungle wide gap hook and this hook is great for for flipping and throwing a big worm and doing a lot of things on it i mean i love this hook right there's nothing wrong with it but here's the thing that swimming worm this worm is way up on top of the water you're throwing it out there and the angle that you're setting the hook on them at is not straight up and down or not down in the water it's almost straight parallel okay and man i would hook some and not and and it didn't ever even feel like i got a hook into them and sometimes you just got to figure out why that is or you never really understand why i think i kind of do but here's the deal i switched so the next day the turn was over and it made me so mad i went back out there 
and I got an owner, just their offset worm wide gap hook. I got it in the five, the five aught, right? This is like the most simple hook there is. And what I mean by that, not in a bad way, it's just like, they start making all these hooks for different reasons. Man, that's what we grew up on throwing. I mean, it's just that hook. Now, if you really pay attention to it, they've changed a lot of the way these hooks are. Back in the day, if you notice, let me, let me get this other one out and I'll show you. If you notice where the line tie is, okay? See how the line tie is right here and the hook points right here? It's almost on the exact same, uh, it's, it's really parallel or level. It's really level. Does that make sense? So it's in line. Now look at this one. That hook points way up here and the line ties way down here, right? So, I mean, they're not level at all. It sticks so much further up than that line tie. That was the key. Like, that was everything. It's also a lot longer, too. And these worms, you know, that we're throwing, the size of them, uh, they're fairly big worms, right? Especially, I was throwing the bigger one, okay? Strike King's new bigger one, right? Like this. But they always come like that. I mean, that's a, that's a seven to eight inch worm, right? I think it might be seven and a half. That's a big, long worm. So you got this hook that sits right there on it. You know, it comes down maybe two inches as opposed to this one, it comes down even further. So a lot of times they do like to just grab half of it or something that helped out a lot. So this is everything. Like this is the biggest key. And I really wanted to share that with y'all. Like, this is the biggest key to rigging this up. So, I'll go ahead, tie a polar bar knot on there. And there's one one or two more things I really want to share with y'all. So, got the polar bar knot on there. Got some scissors somewhere around here. Now, obviously you want to push that all the way down. Now, to rig it, this is the other deal. So, the tail on this, the curvature on it, right? And it fit, you can see how it curves that way. You want this, this curve down, okay, when it, sw when it swims. So, when you, when you rig it, you wanna go through the top of it. And wherever, wherever that point of that tail is facing you, okay? See, see how it's facing me right now? Maybe I can zoom in and y'all can see. So as it's facing me, that's where the hook comes out, okay? So when you come down there, twist it on there, now the hook, the bend of the hook is in line with the tail as the point of it comes this way. You all want that on one side. That's important. So when you rig it, you want that tail down. You really want it down, guys. That's, that's a big key. Now, if you put that on there straight, you can see how that hook is sitting out there, right? this is this is it's not an issue but this is this is the problem you're gonna have so you can stick it back in there and make it perfect like that it's gonna want to come out and stick out just by the way the design is that's what you want though because when you hook them you never lose one i mean that's the whole key so like if it just gets a little bit of pressure i mean it just instantly wants to come out and slide down that thing and you get a great hook set so i mean you can barely get it in there like that and it'll it'll swim straight but I mean, any kind of little pressure just instantly pushes that hook. I mean, you can see that. That was one of the big keys. That other one, since it's straight in there, you would have to press down. It would almost do like this. You would press down and it wouldn't, but see this, that one wants to come up. The other one would just stick there and, it, and that hook point would never come out. And that's what you want. You want them, all this, you can still catch seven, eight out of 10 on that other one. I want to catch 10 out of 10. Like that's my goal, right? So, I mean, that's how I rigged it up. If you saw throughout the video, most of the time when I was reeling it, 100% of the time I was reeling it, I was always throwing this big one. I got it on, um, I have it on two different rods. Um, I always usually rig up two different rods. This is Falcon's old rod. And I say old just because I love it still. It's their swim bait uh, carrier rod, right? Seven foot three. Uh, I just have a bunch of these, feel comfortable with doing them. Uh, I have it on lose a lose speed spool 
um, Pro Series. This is becoming probably my favorite. If you see most of the reels I have on there are this one. Um, it's an eight to one. And what I wanted that for was, is I wanted to really just like be able to crank on them. Um, I was fishing arrowheads and I would have to throw past the arrowhead and reel them straight into the arrowhead and they would hit right before or either right in the middle of it. So, I mean, I was having to just really hit them hard. And a lot of times they'd shoot out of there. And, I, you know, I just like an eight to one, you can get away with it. The faster the reel, always go with the faster the, re the reel speed. So if you can get to eight to one, use an eight to one. I'm not a big guy on, on braid when it comes to a lot of that. If I don't feel like I need to use it, I, I, I never broke off. Um, and I had it on 25 pound sunlight. Uh, I'll get that out and show you all that here in a second. 25 pound Sunline shooter. So I had it on 25 pound Sunline and that that's kind of my deal. What happened is, is by day three, and I say day three, so by day two, but it was the, it was my third video. Um, they started to lock down, right? And, and, and I just didn't feel like that big one, like, I didn't feel like that big one was the same reason uh, to use the big one. The big one was for, it's really not that clear down there. So I'm throwing something big that has a lot of vibration that they can find. Uh, I know they're only in two foot of water, but I really honestly don't know how far they're coming to eat this thing. So I want them to be able to see it or hear it or feel it as far as possible. When they're on a bed, is which is where I think they started to, how I started to catch them, you don't have to go as big, right? So I switched down to their regular cutter worm. This is the cutter worm that they first came out with, uh, the first size. Now it's only about six inches. It's small, compact, but now I'm not reeling it. I'm not, they're not having to go find it. I'm putting it where they live. So that's where I switched. And now and I also switched rods and I'll kind of explain why. Uh, so now I started doing the same thing. I started rigging this one, didn't change hooks. I still love the hook. I still like the five out hook. Didn't bother me. Still rig it the same, right? So I still rig it the exact same. Now it's just a little bit compact uh, bait, but, but they're on bed. So you don't need something real big. Um, and I got it on Falcon's new expert rod. It's their 74 Amstead, right? It's their extra heavy. But if you notice where I was throwing this thing, right? I was throwing it in the pads. Um, I'm not saying this rod's heavier than that one but it isn't this longer and i swear to you man like an inch here an inch there uh makes a difference so that's kind of what i was doing um i still had it on a uh, i had it on a seven to one uh, i had it on this one this is just their old you know still their their uh speed spool bb1 i still like that right i still had it on 25 pound 25 pound line because I didn't think it still mattered. Um, I wasn't really worried about trying to reel on them as quick and as hard because I was going to be getting down there, getting a good hook set. Um, so I wasn't having to either catch up with them or stuff. And if you notice, most of them were in the pads. So it took me a little bit harder to get them out of there, which means I didn't have to reel a whole bunch. You know what I mean? It, it was just an easier reel to, to maneuver through. So that's my setup. Th those were the two things. Um, and, and like I said, those are big big keys guys i mean i wish i mean i lost two or three fish down there at at, at uh Kissimmee from that other hook and how i had it rigged and that's kind of the learning stuff that i've had to learn over 
over the last couple of years when I go to these different places, you know, and, and it, it, it sucks, man, because I wish I had learned that after day one or day two, but I had been shaking fish off and I didn't really know. So, like I said, we went out there the next day after the tournament and went through these things and like tried to get better at it and figure out the, the equipment and the setup. Because to me, the setup was everything. I'd already figured out how to catch them. I just needed to know like why I missed a couple of them. And it, it was crazy too, because now we go back there a year later, different lake, but still Florida. I catch them doing the, you know, somewhat the exact same thing. Never lost one, never missed one. I think I missed one on a bed, but those are kind of different. They're not hitting the same, but the, all the other ones you can see, I mean, all the times I'm reeling it, never missed one, never lost one. The entire time I'm down there, they're all hooked phenomenal. Uh, I even caught one flipping. I didn't swing that one in because I thought she might be bigger. She really fought hard. Uh, she's still a four and a half, almost five pounder, but they're all just hooked great. And they never came off. Um, and like I said, I even learned how to, to rig it elite a little bit better. Uh, still throwing the June bug. Um, and so th those are the things I wanted to share with y'all. It's really interesting to see how that played out. Um, how they were on bed, they weren't on beds and they were kind of swimming around and you catch them like that and all of a sudden like like that day or that night i don't know when it happened if it was that night or when it was that i'm not saying they weren't all they were some locked down before but it seemed like the giant push started just all locking down and you could see that uh happen but that's my setup those are uh those are my rods and reels and line and and like i said the hooks all that stuff's the same uh so go try that out uh Figure out what you can do with these stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like mess around with that, go out to your local lake, just try this. Um, it, sometimes like when you come back to Texas, it doesn't really work the same. And this isn't even Texas, like anywhere you live, I promise you, you just have to figure out, in, in Florida, we have figured out how to catch them down there in certain situations. Here it might be bushes, it might be around trees, it might be where people swim and jig. Really pay attention to that guys because you'll probably might be the only person throwing something like this because it, it just doesn't get utilized a lot of times around your local lakes. So uh, try it out, comment on here, uh, tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you got something else you wanna see how I rig it up or, or what I've learned and and, uh, and I'll, I'll try to do a video on that, man. Uh, sometimes I just kinda of don't know what y'all want. So uh, let me know what y'all think.